Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to do something like this. Did you catch what I was kind of sort of doing? No? Okay, I'm gonna do it again, and I'm gonna give you a hint. Watch the bass movement. Watch what the bass is doing. Oh, here it is again. Well, maybe this time some of you had caught a glimpse of sort of what I was doing there. So this is obviously a reharmonization technique I'm using, yes? And it has a pattern to it, a predetermined pattern. What do I mean by that? I mean that I decided ahead of time that every consecutive bass note is gonna keep going down, 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 by half steps, right? and so on. I could have decided that the bass notes are gonna go down by whole steps, or by thirds, or by fourths, or fifths, or whatever it is. But this time, I decided that the bass is going to move half step down every time. And that's my starting point. This melody that's not gonna change, and this bass motion that's not gonna change. And the game is to tie the two together with chords. Chords that sort of justify the relationship between the bass note and the melody. Even though at times that relationship is very suspect, as you will hear in a second. So let me show you my starting position. This is what I start with. Right? This is what I started with. I decided the bass notes are going to go half step down, 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 and the melody is going to be, you know, the melody. Uh, now I have to find chords to justify this whole thing. So let's see, what do we have? Okay, so the first chord could just be a C major. What could this chord be? This could be a B minor 11, right? How do I know? Because I see the B in the bass and I see the E in the melody. And I'm like, well, E is kind of an 11th in the B minor 11 chord, so. So, okay, well, then. Nice. What could this chord be? What's the relationship between B flat and G? Well, it could be different chords, obviously. Often there's more than one option, right? Those options I choose are just options I prefer personally, but those could be different ones. This could be a B flat sus, or sharp 11, or, right? And probably a couple more that I'm missing, but the point is this, as I look at the bass note and I look at the melody and it's like, okay, what, what chord could I play in between this bass note and this melody note to justify their relationship? 
which essentially is a random relationship because I'm just using a reharm technique of descending bass. I didn't plan the perfect bass note for every melody note, right? The relationship of the bass note and the melody note is always random. And that's the fun part. This is when you get to sort of justify that randomness with an awesome chord voicing that you stick in between there, right? So. Nice. Sounds like music. <laughs> cool. This is, so. A minor, this could be an A minor seven. Yeah, because it's the end of a melodic phrase. Uh, let's give it a resolution and a rest. Don't, don't, don't rest, right? After all these weird chords. And there could be other options here, but like I, I like this option because, again, I want it to be as musical as I can, given that it's already an exercise and not really an attempt to make music. <laughs> so I want to try to stay as musical as possible, even within a context of an exercise like this one. So let's see, what do we have so far? So, so, what can we do with this bass note and this melody note? Can, how, what kind of, what kind of chord could we play between these two to justify their relationship? We could do the traditional E over G sharp. And then A minor over G. So just like the original song goes. Or <laughs> we could be smart ass about it and do something else. <laughs> uh, how about this chord? It's almost like a F minor major seven over A flat. I really like that voicing a lot. So. Yeah. What could this be? So. Again, same question, right? This is the bass note, this is the melody note. What do we do? <laughs> That's the game we're playing. That's the game we have to win and try to remain as musical as possible. Maybe this. This could be a minor 11 again, because this is an 11 G minor chord. Or it could be a form of a nice sus chord. Ah, oh, that's cute. I like that better than this. Nah. Nice. So what do we have? Yeah. Oof. Oh, that's gonna be tough. Okay. So. Again, what could this be? This could be minor seven. This could be a sus. Oh, I think that's got those two sus chords. So. Nice. Okay. See, and this is where we meet the inevitable misfortune of juxtaposing melodies to bass notes randomly. Sometimes you're going to end up with something like this, <laughs> right? And you have to figure out what chord to put in there to make these two notes work with one another. F natural against F sharp, Jesus. So, I mean, yeah, we're going to find something. There's some options. So let's get there again so we can see what it sounds like. Okay, let's see. So F sharp, what is F sharp to an F natural? It's, an, it's a flat nine, right? So this, we already have that going for us. 
So it could be that. There's also this option. Okay. So. Yeah, let's go with this one. Let's make this a simple chord. E minor. Why? Again. Because the chords coming before this one were so dense and so tense that it makes me want to balance all that tension with a relaxing, plain sort of minor chord. So. <sighs> you see what I'm trying to say? Again, I'm going to keep stressing this. Even though this is an exercise, you still have the responsibility of being musical with it. You can't just stick any random chords together. This is already bad enough that it's not really a piece of music, it's an attempt at a technique. So all the more we have the responsibility to balance that with as much musicality as we can come up with, because we're still making music. And on that point, you guys, I wanna stress something very important. All these techniques I'm teaching you here in these videos, how to reharmonize stuff, these things should be used very sparingly in real life. These things should be used as spices in your arrangements. This kind of stuff is never the meat and potatoes of music. This kind of stuff is something you use for three bars out of your entire arrangement to sort of spice things up a little bit. Like you use this kind of technique or the technique I taught in the previous video. So I know these reharmonization techniques are super fun, but please use with caution. Yeah, you don't want your music to sound like a harmony class homework. Use these sparingly. So, okay, let's see what we've got so far. Nice. Kind of sounds like music. All right. So... So, yeah, that's cool. See how it sounds nice after that E minor? And this is a D minor. Yeah, also you guys, check out all these voicings I'm playing. I think you might find some of them really useful. What could this be? D flat against C natural. Well, that's a, that's a major seven, right? So let's play a major seven. And then take it half step down. So... Right? That's cool. And notice another thing. If I would have played... Right? It would have still been the same thing, right? We're still using the same technique. It's still a major seven and D flat. And this is still a major seven and C. But if we play this C or this C, the second one sounds a whole lot better in this context. So. All of these things I'm showing you, they require you to have some awesome voicings under your fingers. And like I said, you can grab these, you could come up with some new ones, but for now I'm gonna use my voicings and hopefully get the point across in this video. B against A, that's a seven and B seven. So I'm gonna play this B seven. So, what could this chord be? Yeah, SS works here. 
It's a nice surprising kind of sound at this particular spot. Sus. That's what we've got left. This kind of wants to keep going. So I'm going to, from that sus, I'm going to descend to A minor. What are the options? So, what could this be? This could be a major seven. Or it could be... Nah, too smart. Yeah, that's pretty. wants to be a sus chord. We could do this. Or we could do... Right? What are the relationship of these two? Huh, see? Yeah, like I said, sometimes you're stuck with some, something like this and you gotta come up with a chord to tie these two together because that's the exercise. So, yeah, so that's a... It could be A flat over G flat or G flat major seven with sharp eleven in the melody. So major And do you notice me go two bars back every time and playing it from sort of the beginning of the phrase? Why do I do that? Why don't I just play the previous chord and then find the next chord? Again, because I'm trying to make it sound as musical as I can, and I'm trying each one of my choices to make musical sense within the context of its, I don't know, phrase or within the context of the last eight bars. That's why I keep rewinding all the time, not one chord back, but like four chords back to see how they all work in sequence. Because it's not enough to just find any random chord to justify an already random melody bass relationship, right? The melody versus bass is already a random relationship. You want to make the chords as thoughtful as possible because you don't want to add more randomness to the already existing randomness. You want to balance the randomness with some consideration. So let's see what we have. I'm going to play it from the beginning to end. The bass is going to keep descending like we decided, half step down, half step down, half step down. The melody is going to be the melody, and the chords we found are right here. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm doing, right? I'm deciding on the bass motion, I'm deciding on a melody, and I'm finding chords to justify that bass versus melody relationship with hopefully some kind of musical nice chords. So that's about it, you guys. Let me know if you have any questions or requests. I answer every single person and try to coach you guys as much as I can. If you like this video, please press the like button down below and subscribe to the channel. I release a bunch of this kind of content, as well as vlogs of me touring and playing concerts all over the world. If you're already a subscriber, please hit that notification bell so you can be notified every time I release a video. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Peace.